Doug Adair, weeknights at 6 and 11 on Newswatch 4 Columbus. Most people have some form of religion in their lives, but according to one of my guests today, there's a trend these days to move away from any kind of religion, you know, especially with what's been happening in the news. Ron Nado is the president of an organization called the Rationalist Society, and they happen to be in St. Louis. It's an organization of atheists, and they have a very unusual technique through which members can denounce their faith. They call this de-baptism. And we're going to show you a videotape of an actual de-baptism that took place last May. I, Albert G. Stanger. I, Albert G. Stanger. Being of sound and confident mind. Being of sound and confident mind. Declare my wish to consider myself de-baptized. Declare my wish to consider myself de-baptized. Al, you are now de-baptized. Thank you. May you... <laughs> may you hereafter live free of superstitions and fears of all kinds and benefit from the use of reason in your daily life. Thank you, Steve. Congratulations. <laughs> okay. Party time. <laughs> okay, we have lunch over here. <laughs> All right, let me introduce to you Barbara Stocker. Now, Barbara recently joined the Rationalist Society, and she will be de-baptized very soon, unless you decide to talk her out of it. <laughs> this is Brother Jed and Sister Cindy Smock, and they are Christian evangelists who are very appalled by atheism. They preach that anyone who gets de-baptized is blasphemous and will burn in eternal hellfire. Let's start with Ron. As the president of the Rationalist Society of St. Louis, why do you feel the need to de-baptize? Wouldn't you just say, well, I, uh, like a lot of people do, I've fallen away from my religion, or uh, I just don't practice anymore? Well, why be quiet about it? I mean, if you've uh, <clears throat> finally shed the shackles of, uh, of a superstition and something that's uh, held you down and something that's false, why not celebrate it? And that's what we're trying to do, is give people the opportunity to actually declare to the public, or declare to whoever they want to, that uh, they're free of uh, the shackles that they've been under un until that point. What? It's, a, it's a declaration of freedom. But what represents to you the shackles of religion? Well, I believe the Bible is just a, um, a book written by human beings, and um, there are a lot of contradictions. Uh, Mark, Mark Twain Name said. One. Mark Twain said that it was. They had good poetry. It Mark had Twain's this, in hell. That's where you're going to be. If you that. don't repent. <laughs> and, Barbara, and he finished why off by do saying you? That it also had upwards of a thousand lies, and I think that's the. Well, well, what are these lies? Name one contradiction that Cindy has challenged you. Well. In part of the Bible, God says, uh, thou shalt not kill, and, that in, and in other parts of the Bible, he, he says it's okay to, you know, to scourge the earth and, uh, and rape the women, and, uh, you know, it's, well, there's you can't, all kinds of... You can't uh, interpret the Bible out of context. First of all, that is, is uh, that the, the commandment, the sixth commandment is translated in most biblical translations, thou shalt not murder. Murder is unjustified killing. Sometimes killing may be justified, for instance, the Bible does ordain capital punishment, uh, but you can never... Uh, let, me, let me just move away from the Bible a moment. Let's hear your story. Why would you like to be de uh, Okay, because uh, I made a mistake in trying to grow up religious. Uh, contrary to most people who are baptized as babies, uh, I wasn't. But when I was 12 years old, I found my friends joining the church, and I thought, well, I should... I should go along with this. Well, I would like to know why it's got to be a public statement. People seem to want to make their religion such a public matter. I don't believe that religion is a public matter. I believe religion is in your heart. And if you truly believe that, if you don't believe in the religion that you were baptized in, then in your heart you weren't baptized. So why do you need to go out and tell the world that you're going to debaptize yourself when in your heart you already know it? Uh, yes, but they don't. The rest of the world doesn't know that about well, me. What do they matter? Who cares what the rest of the world thinks or wants? Uh, or? A lot of people care what the rest of the world thinks about them. They, they're, they're trying to gather people to their way of thinking. 
Can we go back to the th any one of the thousand lies in the Bible? You want to just... Uh... There are so many contradictions. I have... I'm, 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 if there are so many, you ought to be at least tell us one. We've challenged you several times. Just one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, in Genesis, uh, this is an interesting thing. The, the, the earth was supposed... The whole universe was supposed to, be been, uh, to have been created in four days. And uh, six days, six days. <laughs> I don't really think this. I don't think you've really, there. really read the Bible. Have you read the Bible completely through from Genesis through Revelation? I admit, if you just read parts of the Bible here and there, there'll be a lot of parts of it that appear to contradict one another. But once you read the whole thing you really and put it together, you'll find that there are no contradictions. Do you really think the universe was created in six days, Judd? Well, I'm not saying that these were necessarily uh, six uh, literal 24-hour days. We speak of solar days. Of course, the sun uh, wasn't created until uh, the fourth day. All of these things we think are myths and uh, pretty ridiculous. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. We have one side, we have another. Right now, we're going to meet somebody, uh, I would guess, plumb in the middle. Or I hope it turns out that he's plumb in the middle and ask some more questions when we return. <laughs>